Hey, let's talk about creating and editing today. But before we do that, let's do something else. Now this here is an amazing and interesting record. It's all the way from 1975 and it has an amazing lineup of musicians. Uh, the vocals are by Thelma Houston and then the other musicians include um, Michael O'Martian, a great piano player, musician, played uh, on Steely Dan records and other really great records, uh, guitars Larry Carton, Dean Parks, no need to say more, drums among others Jim Keltner uh, and Billy Schnee uh, as the engineer to get this all recorded. Now the record is called I Got Music In Me, uh, Thelma Houston and the Pressure Cooker, so it's kind of a studio band and I'd like to play you some of the tunes here but you know the the copyright holders and the YouTube police would come and arrest me and torture my offspring so I can't play anything here but I do the second best I show you the record like this looks awesome now in addition to the lineup of the musicians on this record there's something else that is totally unique or interesting it's not really actually unique but it's very interesting this is so-called direct cut record uh, so what does it mean it means that the you know you put the entire band ready to play like in the concert situation, so actually it is a studio live, but it's much more. All the artists are ready, all the sound engineers are ready, all the recording equipment is ready, and then the whole side, all the, you know, one, two, three, four, five songs are played at one go to the entire side of the record. And while the band is playing, the playing is not actually recorded on a tape and it's not recorded on any kind of digital media. I mean, it was a 75. Uh, but it is directly carved on the lacquer disc. You know, that's why it's called a direct cut. So it's physically carved on the disc while the band is playing. Now, this requires amazing musical but also engineering talent, hand in hand. Mm, uh, of course, outstanding musical performance, like the entire side of the album must be played at one go. No pauses between the songs, just back to back playing. There are no tuning of instruments between the songs. Uh, you know, you can't really change an instrument, you can't change time, so you know, anything. You just need to keep on playing. And the engineering craftsmanship is even more outstanding if you think that you can't do anything for the record afterwards. You can't EQ it, you can't compress it, you can't do anything because it's carved physically on the lacquer disc. Mixing, mastering, EQing, everything needs to happen at the same time when the band is playing. And then playing directly on a lacquer master limits the number of vinyls you can make. By the way, vinyl is the fastest growing musical format nowadays. It grows about 20% annually. Go and figure. Anyway, so you got the lacquer disc. You know, now this time cut directly on the disc while the band is playing. And then uh, that is like a normal vinyl. You could actually play that on a, a record player, but it's not very durable, so I wouldn't recommend that. Now from that you make a metal negative. So you pour uh, liquid metal on top of that lacquer disc and you create a negative. This is like a negative of an LP. And then from this you make the final vinyls that you sell. You cast plastic on top of this, you press it, and then you got a vinyl. Now, these run out eventually, you can make only so many vinyls from these, and then from the original lacquer disc, you can only make a handful of these. So, not only you need to record the entire record at one go, but you also limit the number of physical discs, physical vinyls you can make. So why did the bands and people do that then? I mean, it was because of the audio quality, 
no tapes, no problems with the tapes and, and then it was the performance setting you know it kind of sets the tone for the recording when you know that you need to record the entire side so it's the session itself you know it was uh, it was actually the most original way of doing records but you know then when the tape was introduced I think in the 40s so that kind of got forgotten but there were a few uh, albums like this done during the years and it's kind of an interesting process. Now of course the whole recording even done in the traditional way was much more complicated back in the days with the tape and analog times than it is now. I mean both for photography and for music industry of course digitalization is the best thing that has happened and it has simplified a lot of things and, and made them easier and possible. Now back in the days the audio equipment set the limits, you know, audio quality, no auto-tune, analog gear made it impossible to change one note and, and all that, so it was much more dependent on the actual performance. Also the gear was much more expensive and if you used hired guns like in this record it is expensive to hire real musicians. With the digital era you can do a lot of things to circumvent that. You can use pre-recorded you know um, performances so you can hire somebody online you know in the remote location you know and, and, and do various kind of tricks. So digital have of course changed the way music is done, like it has changed the way photography is done. Most of music is done with computers today. Uh, from pieces, little fragments, you know, there are unlimited possibilities to fine tune every little detail of your recording. You know, every little detail can be adjusted in post. Every note, every nuance, every vocal performance, every phrase, every solo, every snare hit can be touched. You know, you can move this one little note two milliseconds forward if that's what your ear requires. So the possibilities are limitless. So you get what you want. The gear won't limit you anymore. So unlimited possibilities to construct a musical piece from little fragments or take new takes as many times as you want and then fix all the errors in post. Sounds a little bit like digital photography, doesn't it? And, and, and let's remind us that I'm definitely not against digital. I'm not against uh, digital production of music or digital photography. I just want to point out that they are totally different art forms and as such they both have their places. So for those of you who are still interested in how the music is currently made and is not really into that world, let me show you, uh, let me make a short clip of music with my computer to show how it is mostly done today. Uh, for those of you who don't care, you can jump directly to this position in my video. That's where my messing with the music stops and, and you can go back to photography. So let's create a small example of music right now, right here, with my computer. Hey, this is Cubase, one of the most popular music production environment. And I've been using this product, different versions of it, quite a long time. So let me show you how to compose and create a piece of music with this. What's my process? So I typically start with the drum track. I find the kind of the groove that I need. Uh, there's a plenty of drum kits and drum loops available and these are played with the real drums by real drummers. So they sound exactly like real drums because that's what they are. And let me find a nice groove to, to start with. Um, let's do something funky this time. These are all segments, a few par loops, and I select this one as a starting point. 
and drag two bars on a recording track. These vertical tracks represent like the multi-track recorder. And here is now one two bar loop. And then I want to select something like an intro fill to start my tune with. Yeah, now, okay, hold on, your horse is like quiet. You know, this reminds me a little bit like Steve Cat playing, and now I'm asking Steve to play as long as I say no, so an entire uh, song that I'm trying to make. Okay, that's good. That's the drum loop for the time being. Then I lay down some kind of a chord track, something that I can place my song on and let me choose an instrument. I'll take a Wurlitzer, a virtually modeled Wurlitzer electric piano. Now, I, I also own a genuine Wurlitzer, but this uh, virtual creation is pretty damn close, so uh, and it's easier to use in this context, so let me use that. And I play it through the MIDI keyboard. Now that'll do for the time being, then let's add a bass. Now I, pay, I play bass also with the MIDI keyboard. I'm not really that good of a bass player, so let me choose the right bass plug-in here. Yeah, that should be fine. And then I can select the right player profile so that it sort of the player pulls the strings in a certain way. So I want a little bit like soul and funk groove to his playing. And then MIDI keyboard once again. I'm playing this real time now and I'm a little bit behind the groove but it doesn't really matter because I can fix it in a second. I've created a quantizing um, kind of a pattern that quantizes my bass uh, playing so that it doesn't put everything right on the spot but let it, let it you know, it's letting it breathe. Jaco Pastorius a bit and then Steve Gadd, you know, I got a nice band going on here. Okay, and then moving on, uh, let's add some strings. You know, there's a string quartet that I can invite to the studio. Uh, somewhere down here, here we go. Now, would this be okay? Let's see. Here. Uh, 
uh, let's first add, by the way, a little bit uh, reverb there, just to move it a little bit to the background. It's like closest to the bokeh you can do in music, adding reverb and moving the instrument a little bit back in the in the pitch. Yeah. Now there's a mistake. I need to fix that. It's like photoshopping now. Let's open the detail editor. Uh, let's clean up the studio first. Let's move these instruments to the walls, you know, away from the studio floor and let's concentrate on photoshopping my string part. Yeah, that's wrong. There's a C sharp somewhere. Um, here's a C sharp. I need to make it a C. Just moving it uh, half a step down. Now it's good. Okay, but now I don't like the piano anymore. This I won't quantize because it would take life out of it. Instead I add a little bit phaser just to make it a little bit wider. Now that I changed the part, the piano part, I, I really don't like the string part anymore. I want to make the strings longer now that the piano plays staccato. Now this uh, starts to sound a little bit like an elevator song, so let me add some punch to the drum beat. It's too, there's too much going on. Less is more. Yeah. Uh, the snare drum uh, fits nicely with the uh, bass, so now we ask Steve to play differently and now it sounds like this should be better. Okay, 
And now let's continue with the theme of elevator music and instead of building an apartment elevator let's make a hotel elevator that goes sort of outside of the building. For that we need some horns and some brass. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's make it a little bit wider. Yep. And then add some reverb. Cool. Let me first play the melody with the, with the uh, brass. Just the melody line. And, and then another shake where I imitate the mouth and breath of the you know horn section. Okay, and then uh, just for the heck of it, uh, let's give. Uh, let's see what it looks like. By the way, I could do this forever. I, I don't play video games, so. Uh, let's give uh, Steve Gadd the third hand and play some uh, right symbol to the second part. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And that I want to quantize and by the way I could do this forever and does it make it any better now that I keep on doing this that I don't know but it's a lot of fun to... this would not have ended there like I would have continued tweaking and changing it till the cows come home and that's kind of one difficulty of both digital photography and digital music production that because everything is possible you end up doing it forever so is music now any better yeah I don't know now let's then go back to photography and compare the music production and photography. Like in digital world you would take as many shots as needed from your subject, from your landscape or whatnot, to get the perfect pitch. Like it doesn't cost you any more, so you end up having hundreds if not thousands of pictures of that same important subject. Then you would Photoshop the errors away. You would probably use some some filters that you bought. Uh, you would let the computer to tune the white balance and all that. So unlimited possibilities to perfect your pictures. You would take as many shots as needed and then use all the digital tools at your disposal to tweak each and every detail to the perfection. And then the question is, are the pictures better now? So let's go back to the original direct cut record, which all its mistakes, all the technical challenges, one shot, everything there. No post-processing, no editing. So what is the closest of this in photography? I think it would be shooting color positives, analog color positives, and then representing them and showing them through a projector and not going to the computer at all.
so you would need to limit the exposures these are rather expensive especially these large format uh, color positives uh, you can't edit it afterwards it is what it is and if you reflect that with the projector on the wall I mean or look at it against the uh, light table I mean it is what it is there's no way of editing it and, and this is kind of cool. Uh, you can't crop it, you can't reframe it, you can't change any mistake. It is what it is, like the direct cut record. You know, I'm a big fan of post-processing. I do a lot of post-processing in my darkroom using the analog means, but also a lot of post-processing in my Lightroom with a computer. And that's part of my photographic process. But I also cherish and respect the directness of the direct cut, but also color positives. Now, um, there's something really unique about them. It requires a lot of skills and, and dedication. Color positives, I mean. It is funny how much there is a comparison between music and photography. I have never really thought about that. I do them both and, and the more I work with both domains, the more I see similarities. Uh, by the way, in the last video I showed my naked body now I try to show my intelligence. Mm -hmm. 